The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Uh... <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. In the home of the great Gildersleeve, it's breakfast time. With his small family grouped around him, a plate of scrambled eggs and toast before him, the great man judiciously weighs the problems of the day and makes his calm decisions. No, absolutely not. Confound it, no. But Uncle Moore... Marjorie, you know perfectly well we don't go to the movies on a school night. But, Unky, this is a very special picture. It won't be there for I... I don't want to hear another word about it. We have certain rules around this house, and by George, we're going to keep... Oh, all right, Unky, I only asked. That goes for you, too, Leroy. Who said anything? Well, see that you don't. For God's sake, I'm sitting here eating my breakfast. Who said anything about a movie? That will do, young man. I don't want to hear the movies mentioned again. Okay, okay. What's the name of the picture? It's called Until I Met You. It's all about this girl who thinks she's in love with this man, but the night before she's to marry him, she falls madly in love with this other man, and, well, Francie saw it last night, she said it was just simply inspiring. Inspiring. That's the wrong kind of inspiration for girls your age. Oh, Anki, don't be so conservative. Conservative? Just because I never dashed madly out of the house to see those mushy Mona Miller pictures? How did you know Mona Miller was in it? I saw the trailer last Thursday. With slaves to love. <laughs> Is that why we had dinner so early? Eat your breakfast, Leroy. Here's a fresh pot of coffee, Mr. Gilsey, right off the front burner. Oh, thank you, Bertie. Telephone. Uh-oh, that is again, Mr. Gill. See that telephone. Seems like all it ever does is ring, ring, ring. Telephone. It's no wonder I can't get my work done around here, Mr. Gill. See, it's like that all day long. It's ring, ring, ring. Telephone. Ring it. Answer it, Leroy. Uh, okay. I've never seen anything like this. Ring, ring. It's coming, Leroy. Who is it? That's me. I think it's a woman. You think it's a woman? Uh, Hello, Gildersleeve speaking. Is that you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Huh? It, go eat your breakfast, Leroy. See, it's some woman, isn't it? No, it's Bessie, my secretary. Yes, Bessie? Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I have some news for you. News? I'm not going to work today. I see. But what's the news? I mean, I won't be at the office at all on account of I can't come to work. Can't come to work? No. But, Bessie, I need you. Why, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> I mean, I need you at the office, Bessie. Confound it, somebody's got to do some work down there. Oh, I'm taking care of that, Mr. Gildersleeve. My cousin is visiting me. She said she'd be very happy to put in a day for me. Bessie, we can't have just anybody down there. What's her name? Curtis Kilpatrick. She has red hair. Red hair? Probably has a nasty temper. Uh, yeah. I'm sure my cousin will be very satisfactory, Mr. Gildersleeve. He works for a big company in New York, only now she's visiting me. Well, uh, what kind of a girl is she, Bessie? Oh, she's very efficient. Oh. I know because she wears glasses. Glasses? Probably wears cotton stockings, too. I think everything will be all right. I hope. You hope? Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. But, Bessie, you just... Nuts. Eggs? I'm coming, Bertie. As I was saying, Uncle Morris. Yes? So after the hero loses the girl and all his money, he gets into trouble. Marjorie, no movie. And besides, that guy doesn't know what trouble is. You in trouble, Uncle? Well, nothing serious, Leroy. Bessie's got a toothache, so she sent her New York cousin to the office to take her place today. Well, how is that trouble? Well, cousin is one of those secretaries that wears glasses and cotton stockings. Well, what's the trouble? And besides that, she's efficient. Well, gosh. No telling what you do. Probably out reading the water meters right now. <laughs> now, Auntie. Well, she's probably started cleaning up the office, too, putting things away. And I won't be able to find anything. I can't find anything as it is. <laughs> Why, George, I better get down there. Come 
confound that Bessie. I'm going to have to get rid of her. Prudence killed Patrick. Sounds like she wears glasses. Well, brace yourself, Gildersleeve. If she's Bessie's cousin, she can't help it. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I'm Mr. He. <laughs> well, how do you do, Mr. He? Is yeah. there something I can do for you? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, of course. I should have recognized you. I'm Prudence Kilpatrick. Well, I was hoping you were. <laughs> <laughs> Bessie said you were quite distinguished looking, Mr. Gildersleeve. She did? Well, fine girl, Bessie. But she said you wore glasses. Oh, only when I read. Oh, very sensible glasses. Very sensible. Well, what's, what's first on the agenda this morning? Huh? Oh, yes. Uh, you're the efficient type. <laughs> I try to be. Well, that's good. As a matter of fact, I'm very efficient, too. Bessie probably didn't mention that. No, she didn't. But I don't want to delay you, Mr. Gildersleeve. What's to be done? Well, uh, you might sharpen the pencils. Oh, I've already done that. And dusted off your desk, too. Really? I wonder why Bessie never thinks of those things. In New York, we usually take dictation in the morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, I'm glad you reminded me. Some very important letters to be gotten off today. Uh, just uh, step into my uh, private office here. <laughs> Make yourself comfy over there, Miss Kill. Uh, may I call you Prudence? Oh, please do. Prudence. <laughs> Uh, all ready, Prudence? Yes, sir. Mm, got your book? Mm, yes, sir. Uh, 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 dear sir. Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes? Yeah? Do you always dictate in your hat and overcoat? Overcoat? Oh, <laughs> don't want to waste any time. <laughs> I'll take them off, though, if they make you uncomfortable. Oh, no, I'm sorry I interrupted. I just didn't realize how pressed you were for time. I mean, starting to dictate even before you get your overcoat off. Yeah, well, time is money, you know. <laughs> I usually hang up my things after I start. <laughs> Ready? Ready. Dear sir. Uh, get that? Yes, sir. Dear sir. Fine. Uh, hmm. Um. <laughs> Guess I better hang up my overcoat. <laughs> it gets all wrinkled. <laughs> there. <laughs> I got a hanger for it one of these days. Dear sir. Huh? Oh yes. Oh yes. Dear sir. Um. Oh. Oh yes. Uh, dear sir. It's been brought to my attention by one of the members of my uh, extensive staff that your water bill is. Uh, uh, is unpaid. Where's that letter the gas company sent me? Oh, oh yeah, here it is. Hmm. We feel sure this has been an oversight on your part and that you will rectify the omission immediately. How does that sound, Prudence? Well, I'm sure it won't be misunderstood. Yeah, get directly to the point, Prudence. That's my motto. Oh, I like that, Mr. Gildersleeve. My employer in New York is that sort of man, too. Oh? Does he dictate a pretty good letter? Oh, yes. Oh, but you do, too, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, thanks. Uh, do you mind if I ask you a question, Prudence? Why, of course not. Does your uh, New York boss ever uh, dictate at night? Well, very rarely. <laughs> and only when there's a very heavy schedule. Would you take dictation for me at night if there was a very heavy schedule? Well, I suppose so. What's the schedule? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, first some dictation, then some dinner, the movie, and uh, maybe a drive in the country. <laughs> well, that sounds like a pretty heavy work schedule. Oh? Well, then we'll just leave the dictation out. <laughs> I'll think about it, Mr. Gildersleeve. Let's finish our work first. Work? Oh, yes, yes, that. <laughs> Here's a letter. I have to sign it. Um, yours, uh, yours sincerely. Hello, Gildy. Anybody home? Who in the world is that? Yeah, I don't blame you. It's Hooker. Not in here, Horace. Yeah. Old friend. Morning, Gildy. I just... Well, well, well. 
Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You've certainly made some improvements around here. <laughs> Uh, Miss Kilpatrick, may I present Judge Hooker? Uh, you... Horace, uh, Miss Kilpatrick. How do you do, Judge Hooker? How do you do, Miss Kilpatrick? This is a pleasant surprise. Uh, Miss Kilpatrick is filling in for Bessie today, and I'm very busy, Horace. I don't wonder. <laughs> I was dictating a letter, and you interrupted a very important thought. Never let it be said that I interrupted one of your important thoughts, Kilpatrick. Pray continue. Uh, where was I, Prudence? Yours sincerely. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Brock Morton, P. Gildersleeve. That's the most important thought you ever had, isn't it, Gilday? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you old goat. That'll be all for now, Prudence. Thank you. Yes, sir, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, to whom shall I address the letter? Oh, uh, there's a big black book in the drawer out there. Just look through it till you find somebody who's delinquent. All right, <laughs> Mr. Judge Hooker. The pleasure is all mine, and I hope there'll be more of it. Oh, you're very gallant. That isn't all. Will you be in Summerfield permanently, Miss Kilpatrick? Well, I'll be here for a while. I'm visiting my cousin, Bessie. Uh, you remember Bessie, Horace? Well, we're neighbors. Bessie lives only a block and a half from my place. Yes, I've been thinking of giving Bessie a raise so she could move to a better neighborhood. <laughs> I should consider it an honor to drive you home after work, Miss Kilpatrick. Yeah, wait a minute, you old goat. I'll drive her home. Don't be silly, Gilday. It's out of your way. Oh, I wouldn't want to inconvenience Mr. Gildersleeve. Then it's settled. I always try to be a good neighbor. Yeah, well, I haven't seen you driving Bessie home. Don't change the subject, Gilday. And there are a number of historical points of interest around our fair city, Miss Kilpatrick, including the old mill house where I was born. She's not interested in ancient history, Horace. <laughs> So perhaps on the way home this afternoon, you'd Darn like... it, Horace, I can show her the historical spots. Uh, Prudence, what about uh, uh, what I asked you about? Oh, as I said, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll have to think it over. <laughs> and may I show you the historical spots, Miss Kilpatrick? Well, I'd be delighted. Oh, <laughs> Have you heard the news, cheese lovers? Kraft American is back. Kraft American is back? Oh, that's wonderful. Will my husband be pleased? Kraft American is back. Yes, genuine Kraft American pasteurized processed cheese with the medium mellow cheddar flavor you've hankered for. Dependable Kraft American that always toasts and melts to perfection. You remember how famous it was before the war. Well, this past year, Kraft has frankly told you that it would take time to make and age cheddars to produce enough Kraft American so all of you could have it. And now it's here. Look for the blue half-pound package. Marked Kraft American. Look for the two-pound loaf. Marked Kraft American. And when you buy a portion or sandwich-sized slices from a five-pound loaf, ask always to see the wrapper. Marked Kraft American. You no longer need to make do with substitutes. A food store near you now has genuine Kraft American. With the mellow cheddar goodness you've wanted for so long. And now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. In the matter of dating his new secretary, Prudence Kilpatrick, some progress has been made. But it seems to Gildersleeve that it's Judge Hooker who's made all the progress. So now we find the great man going all out to win the fair lady, at least for an evening at the Bijou. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. How are things at the office? Uh, not so good, Peavy. As a matter of fact, things are terrible. That's why I'm here. Well, what can I do for you? More erasers? No, I came after a box of candy. Candy? That's right, Peavy, for my secretary. Candy is the first prerequisite of a well-managed office. Well, I wouldn't say that. P.V., you argue too much. Don't you have any candy? Oh, I think I have a few valentine boxes left over, Mr. Gildersleeve. They're not over here. I don't want any leftover valentine candy, P.V. I want something fresh. I guess you wouldn't take one even at a discount. No. Valentine's Day is past. It's a long time till next Valentine's. Yes, that's what I was thinking. 
I do want something a little fancy, though. Uh, how much is that box over there? That one is seven dollars, Mr. Gillespie. Seven dollars? It is a little gaudy, isn't it? <laughs> how much is the red box here at the front of the case? You don't like any of these on top? Why is it you don't want to sell me that one? That's the box I want. All right, Mr. Gillespie, I'll dig it out for you. It, it's the one in front of my finger. No, no, no. Farther back, PB. Near the ant powder. <laughs> right behind the two you knocked over, PB. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I had to do this yesterday, too. Now, this box retails for $4.44, Mr. Gillespie. Wow, that's kind of steep, isn't it? Well, I imagine the red cellophane brings cost up a little. Probably not worth it. It is pretty, though. Bessie feeling well these days, is she? Bessie? Oh, yeah. She's got a toothache. Hmm, that's too bad. I uh, understand there are a number of caramels in this assortment, Mr. Gildersleeve. Chewy one. Well, all the better, Peavy. Well, now, uh, you really think so? <laughs> oh, definitely, Peavy. Good exercise for the jaws. And I hadn't thought of it in just that way. Uh, wrap it up, Peavy. Get real pretty now. Oh, and I need a card to go with it. A card? I mean, we have a nice assortment in the rack here. The uh, conservative ones are on this side. Well, uh, I'm not feeling very conservative today, PB. <laughs> well, the others are popular, too. Here's a nice one, only 15 cents. Well, let's see what it says. Uh, with this gift, I want to tell how I think you're pretty swell. <laughs> so when you're near, or even farther... Happy birthday, dear grandfather. <laughs> birthday? I guess that's not exactly what you're looking for. <laughs> I should say it isn't. Well, how's this one, Mr. Gildersleeve? Grandfather. I suppose with, when it's a grandma. Uh, a small token from one who admires you from afar. Uh, uh, that's better. Peavy, I'll take this one. That card is it? Let me see. Uh, Forty-five cents, I believe. Forty... Oh, well. Where can I write a little note on this, Peavy? I want to add a few words. No, so I just use the top of the counter. Here, I'll push the cough drops back a little. Yeah, thanks, Peavy. Eh, let's see now. What shall I say? <laughs> For my, uh... Charming secretary. In the hope that, uh, She will be my guest tonight. At the bijou. In the balcony. <laughs> there. Hooker doesn't realize the kind of competition he's bucking. I'll just stick the card here in the fold. And that'll be $4.89, Mr. Gillespie. Well, I hope it's worth it. Here's a five, Peavy. Thank you. That was four eighty-nine, ninety, and ten makes five dollars, I believe. Call again, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, we may be in for a couple of cokes later, Peavy. <laughs> I hope Bessie gets you feeling better. Bessie? Who cares about Bessie? Sometimes I think Leroy has the right idea about him. What a character. <laughs> Zippity do da, zippity a, my oh my, what a wonderful day! Zippity do. Prudence, eh? Uh, Prudence, it's me. Are you here? <laughs> Guess not. Maybe she's in my office. Well, she isn't here. Well, when she gets back, I'll ask her to lunch. Here, what's this? A note on the desk. Addressed to me. <laughs> dear Mr. Gillersleeve, she called me dear. <laughs> I've gone to lunch with Judge Hooker. Oh, Hooker? He assured me it was common procedure for Bessie to go out because you were seldom in the office anyway. Darn that Hooker. I bet he asked her to go somewhere else tonight, too. By George Gildersleeve, this calls for some kind of strategy. I know. I'll just leave this candy on her desk here and... Well, 
Commissioner. Come right in. Well, yeah, thanks, Floyd. Floyd, there's something I want to talk to you about. All right. Hop up in the chair. Now, what'll it be? A shave? Well, I could use a nice close shave and a little chat. You come to the right place. Hold your chin up, Commissioner. Both of them. Yes. Yeah. Don't mind if I hurry a bit, do you, Commish? What do you mean? The judge stuck his head in the door a few minutes ago and said he'd be back to get spruced up. Who does that old goat think he is? Casanova? Just leave the sideburns a little long this time, Floyd. Okay. Uh, say, Floyd. Yeah? Uh, didn't the Jolly Boys get a challenge to a bowling match from a club over in Middletown? Yeah, that's right, we did. The Middletown Men's Club. Uh, what did we ever do about that? Agreed to accept the challenge and let it go at that. Oh, by George, we ought to be getting in some practice, Floyd. Wouldn't do no harm, Commish. I ain't seen a bowling ball in so long. If one come in, I'd think it was a customer. Exactly. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference at that. <laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> now, about this bowling. Uh-huh. We're all a little rusty. You take Judge Hooker. Did you know that he used to roll between 225 and 250 regularly? No kidding. I didn't think he could lift a bowling ball, let alone roll one. Oh. He's very tricky, the old goat. You know what you ought to do, Floyd? What? You ought to get all the jolly boys down to the bowling alley tonight for a little workout. You single men just don't understand how the female mind works, do you? Yes. What do you mean? If I went home and announced I was going to the bowling alley tonight, I'd get a workout before I got there. But, Floyd... The honor of the Jolly Boys is at stake. Oh, well, Commissioner, to put it that way... You mean you'll do it? Yeah, I guess so. It'd be awful noisy around my house for a few days. I'd sure like to do a little bowling. By George Floyd, I knew you, we could count on you. You want me to call all the other Jolly Boys and get them down there? Tonight. Remember, it must be tonight, Floyd. Why? Well, the sooner we get started, the better. Oh, and, uh, and don't forget the judge. We want him there, especially. Well, that should be easy. He ain't married. <laughs> Very funny, Floyd. <laughs> Darn good idea to get that practice in. That's right, Floyd. It's for the good of the Jolly Boys. You bet. Well, there you are, Commissioner. All nice and slick. That'll be six bits. Yeah, here's a dollar, Floyd. Keep the change. Thanks. Hey, are you feeling all right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling better anyway. <laughs> I'll see you around, Floyd. Don't dull your razor on Judge Hooker. See you tonight at the bowling alley. Uh, I'm afraid I can't make it tonight, Floyd. But you've got a darn good idea there. <laughs> uh, good old Floyd. <laughs> he knows how to work a hooker, too. The old goat will be at the bowling alley, all right, and I'll have prudence all to myself. Uh-huh. Gildersleeve, you should have been a general. I wonder if Prudence found the candy. <laughs> well, I'm back, Prudence. <laughs> Bessie, what are you doing here? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm back. I see you are. It was the most exciting thing, Mr. Gildersleeve. Last night when I went to bed, I forgot to put my gum in a saucer. And when I woke up this morning, I thought I had a toothache, so I went to the dentist and he found the gum. Wasn't that exciting? <laughs> yeah. Very exciting, but where's Prudence? Oh, she has some shopping to do, Mr. Gildersleeve. She said she was going out tonight. Going out? Who did she say? Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I just can't tell you how thrilled I was when I found that beautiful box of candy on my desk. Uh-huh. And there was just the sweetest note she wrote, Mr. Gildersleeve, to my charming secretary. Uh-huh. I really didn't think you were well, you me that way. Bessie, I... I'd be only too happy to go to the Bijou with you tonight, Mr. Gildersleeve. But Bessie... And I know why you asked me with a note. Because you're just a great big bashful boy. The Great Gilder Slave will be right back, folks. More good news from Kraft is this. Velveeta is plentiful now. You can let the youngsters have all they want of this smooth, melting cheese food with the rich yet mild cheddar flavor. But here's the headline news in food. Kraft American is back. Yes, Kraft American is back. It's in the stores right now, and you can get some tomorrow. Kraft American with the medium, mellow cheddar cheese flavor you've hankered for. Kraft American for wonderful toasted sandwiches, smooth cheese sauce, good Welsh rabbit. When you buy from a five-pound loaf, slices from it, or a portion, ask to see the Kraft name on the wrapper. Or get the two-pound loaf for several half-pound packages. 
you can wave farewell to substitutes. Here's what you've wanted for so long. Genuine Kraft American is back. Yes, your dependable old favorite Kraft American is back. Uh, enjoy the movie, Prudence? Oh, very much, Mr. Gildersleeve. Especially the music. Oh, music seems to affect me. Well, let's turn the radio on. <laughs> there we are. My, what a pretty tune. Shall I sing it for you? Well... The whole world is singing my song. But I sing it only to you. The whole world is humming along. I love you. I love you. I do. You put my dreams to music. I learned how song could start. I gave the world the music, but I gave you my heart. The whole world is singing my song, but I'll always sing it to you. Why, that was. Beautiful. Yeah. Did it give you any ideas? Ideas? Hmm, maybe. <laughs> Have some more candy, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, no, thanks, Bessie. Isn't this a beautiful night? Beautiful. Let's turn this darn thing off. Oh, I just want to lean my head back and watch the snow drift float by. But say, uh, we could drive on out to the lake. We could park and listen to the night wind, Prudence. Sounds like fun. Uh, Bessie. I'll bet you're all tired out from going to the dentist today in the movie with Prudence and me this evening. We could drop you off. Uh-uh. Maybe Prudence is tired. Uh-huh, not me. I could just ride forever. Mm, me too. <laughs> well, it's a little late, Betty. You sure you wouldn't rather be home and your little Betty buys? Uh-uh. Nuts. <laughs> Mr. Gillespie, we're turning around. Aren't we going to the lake? No, I'll have to take you girls home. I just thought of something I have to do at home. I have to go find my bowling shoes. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley as Leroy, Louise Erickson as Marjorie, and Lillian Randolph as Bertie. Earl Ross as Judge Hooker, and Dick LeGrand plays Mr. Peavy. Stay tuned in for Duffy's Tavern, which follows over most of these stations. This is John Lang saying goodnight to the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Good night. Everyone loves really good ice cream. So ask your grocer for several packages of Frizz. Yes, Frizz, F-R-I-Z-Z, is a new craft product that makes delicious ice cream right in your own refrigerator. Ice cream that's velvety smooth and rich with plenty of milk and cream. It's easy. Just add water, a little sugar, and freeze according to the directions on the package. So economical, you get six generous servings from one small package. Remember, Frizz is made by an exclusive process that retains the fresh cream flavor. Try it soon. The new craft product called Frizz. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.